we have the energy coming in from the sun, it should be leaving the earth, but we're inhibiting some of that energy from leaving as it normally would through our accumulation of greenhouse gases. And so tracking the flows of energy is, is a really fundamental issue in climate. From energy point of view, ocean stores 90% uh, of energy imbalance. Energy imbalance is the driver of global warming. Chinese researcher Li Jing Cheng has been measuring ocean heat content and global temperatures. We have a lot of uh, strong winds in hurricanes. And we need to have some uh, energy to support its uh, development, support its uh, intense, intensification, right? The ocean heat content is the energy source of the hurricanes. The rain from a tremendous storm like a Hurricane Harvey has to come from somewhere. Um, and we're kind of able to, for the first time, sort of directly tie the tremendous amount of ocean heat that's building up, not just in the Gulf of Mexico, but around the world due to, to, to human activities. That gets you the precipitation that results in these huge uh, deluges. We have actually analyzed uh, where the water vapor came from, and it came out of the ocean, and the ocean heat content was at record high levels. Because Hurricane Harvey was isolated geographically from other weather systems, it provides a good example for scientists seeking to tease out the interaction of ocean heat with a specific storm. We see these things happening. There's only one thing big enough to be doing it. It's this storm, you know, and, and sort of the, then the pieces of the equation sort of add up. Hurricanes draw heat from the ocean as fuel and cool the surface in their path, as this NASA animation of Hurricane Katrina shows. We find that the ocean lose heat during Harvey because, because it fuels the Harvey development, and then this energy goes into the precipitation. The extra water vapor is the fuel for all kinds of weather systems, whether it's an individual thunderstorm but especially things like uh, tropical cyclones and, and hurricanes. But the thing that's not going to weaken is how much rain uh, Harvey or what's left of Harvey is going to drop. Look at these astronomical rain totals. This is going to be devastating flooding. Harvey extract energy from ocean and release heat by precipitation. So ocean heat content loose is just exactly consistent with energy. Uh, of uh, per precipitation by Harvey. The system temperature before Harvey is 30 degrees, and after Harvey is re reduced to 28 degrees. And the threshold for the hurricane development is 26.5. We can start to say uh, some types of extreme events have become more likely. They would have been much less likely in a climate um, where we didn't pump out all these greenhouse gases. So well, if you're going to deal with climate change, the first thing you do is to try to stop it from happening in the first place. This is called mitigation, and we cut down on emissions. But that's a long-term process. It takes a while before it has big benefits. Climate has changed. We're dealing with some of the consequences now and we'll have to deal with them in the future. We need to adapt to, to those changes that we can't prevent, that, are, that it's too late to prevent. So we first we want to mitigate, but we also want to adapt. And um, you know, right now we're kind of doing neither. The second part is adaptation. So this is building resilience, planning for the consequences that are expected and being prepared for them. And if we don't do those two things, essentially, we suffer the consequences. We have a new normal. We now have to assume that these kind of flood events can occur.